Hello, in this video we're going to learn about configuring VTC. There are basically two methods for configuring VTC. One is the region-based method and another is the path-based method. So we're going to start with the region-based method. The region-based method is a little bit simpler. It's mainly meant for four-way intersections. So I'm going to create a new region configuration and this new region configuration is going to apply to this video scene shown here. So I'm just going to name the region configuration after this particular location. Now whenever we create a new region configuration, the first step is creating a region of interest. And a region of interest is basically the entire area that you want to count. So I'm going to highlight most of the road here, and I'll just explain why I didn't highlight this in one second. So we're going to basically be counting everything in this video. Now, the region I left out, this little area across the street, is because the software can only track a limited number of objects at a time. So if you're watching everywhere here in blue, maybe you only have to track two or three vehicles. But if you're counting everywhere on screen, including this approach across the street, you'd have to be counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 vehicles simultaneously. So it's a little bit easier on the software if you just limit it to this region here. Okay, so moving on, we're going to configure approach 1. So generally, I recommend choosing the nearest approach to the camera and calling that approach 1. And then we're going to configure exit 1, and exit 1 is always directly across from approach 1. Next we'll do approach 2, and as you can see here, the approaches are arranged in a counterclockwise order. So you can see what I just did there was two of the roads are crossing, sorry, two of the edges on this polygon are crossing. And if that happens, they'll be colored red to indicate that it's an error, and it won't allow you to save it. So to correct that, the polygon has to not cross itself, and it must be closed in order to save it. So that'll be fine for Approach 2. Now we'll do Exit 2. So let's just hover over and take a look at that. So one thing I want to point out here is that precision isn't too important here. You know, you don't have to go right up to the edge of the image. Being one pixel off isn't going to make a huge difference. That's the basic idea. Okay, so let's move on to approach three. Now another thing you can notice here when you look at approach three is this is outside the region of interest. So let's take a look again there. The region of interest is this, and approach 3 is outside. Now that's fine. It's not going to cause an issue for classification or for movement counting. Perfectly acceptable to set up a region and have an approach outside of it. Okay, let's set up exit 3. Now approach 4. and exit 4. So this is what I would call a standard four-way intersection where you have one lane in each direction, uh, you have two opposing lanes of traffic, and another two opposing lanes of traffic intersecting that main road. And in this type of intersection, basically all movements are allowed in the sense that any lane can turn right or left. Okay, so let's get started with that. Make sure we've selected the new region configuration we just created, and hit save. And we can see the traffic being counted here. Okay, so now let's try out the path-based configuration method. The purpose of the path-based configuration method is for scenes that don't quite into a standard four-way intersection layout. So for example, we have this road where we have basically a straight highway 
and then a fork off to the left here. So I'm going to call this region configuration fork. And in this case, we only want to count this side of the road, not the opposing direction. So there's our region of interest. Now instead of configuring approaches and exits, we can configure paths. And a path is going to include the entire trajectory of the vehicle from entry to exit. So let's start with approach one to exit one. That's going to be straight. So that we'll call this approach one out to exit one over there. Now let's configure approach one to exit two. And we're going to call that left. So that's going to be approach one to exit two over there. Now let's do another example of approach one to exit one. So that's important to be aware of here, that we can call this approach one to exit one, and we can also call the lane next to it the same thing. So we're going to call this approach one to exit one, and that's also gonna be straight. So what this means is that in the reports generated by VTC, these two movements are gonna be counted the same way. Let's do one more, and this one also is going to be an example of approach one to exit one. So we have approach one to exit one in this lane, this lane, and this lane, and we have a turn off to the fork, approach one to exit two like that. Now let's save the configuration and see how that looks. Okay, thank you for watching this tutorial. That's all for now. Please let us know if you have any questions or comments.